Remember, when do we leave? Waiting for two more passengers. The stage has a schedule. Why don't we leave on time? You. Thank you, Tess. There's pie, too, Sam. It's awful good. I have peas, apple and raisin mixed. <sighs> Dogs and kids. They always love me. That's even enough for him. If he doesn't make trouble for you. He make trouble, huh? I'll be an angel. So was the devil before he was kicked on stairs. Any of you people have guns, you'd better give them to me for safekeeping. Oh, good heavens, no. No weapons, Marshal. No. I never even owned one. You're a cautious man, Marshal. Get in. Hi, Tess. That's all right. Thank you. Not at all. Marshal, I'm State Finance Commissioner, J. Robert Pauley. Are you in this... this, uh... Are you going through to El Paso? No, just as far as Mescalero, Commissioner. Well, that's some little consolation. Object to my company, Commissioner. Transporting a prisoner in a public conveyance. Forcing decent citizens to associate with him. You know, I could not agree more with you, Commissioner. No, sir, Ree, I could not agree more with you. Now, if you can fix it with the marshal here, I will get off this stagecoach right now. <laughs> How about it, Marshal? For the Commissioner. <laughs> there, you see? No cooperation. All right, Charlie. That's enough talk out of you for a while. <laughs> uh, you going through to El Paso, miss? Yes. Oh, so am I. My name's Arnold. Horace Arnold. I'm Abigail Holmes. How do you do? El Paso's where I'm going. I'm Mrs. Dodge. My sister lives there. She's sick. Oh, I'm sorry. It was just the miseries. She gets them every year for a week or two. It's uh, just so Bertha and I can get together for a while to catch up on our gossip. <laughs> Are you staying in El Paso, Mr. Arnold? For a while, I have some customers there. I'm a salesman. What's your line, Mr. Arnold? I'm in dresses and yard goods. <laughs> <laughs> dresses and yard goods, huh? <laughs> 
I mean, crime and robbery. <laughs> well, you don't seem very ashamed of it. <laughs> Why should I be, huh? The work is easy and the pay is good. I go where I want and I do what I please. Something every one of you would like to try, huh? Huh? You, Miss Holmes, haven't you ever seen a dress? A piece of jewelry? Or, uh, maybe a man you wanted to... Shut up, Johnny! Let me tell you what this man's easy work is really like. Easy money. In the last five hold-ups Johnny Q was in, three of his men were killed. Any one of them could have been Johnny. The pay good? Better than the marshals. The money that was taken in was $15,000. For that, Johnny's gonna spend 30 years of his life in the prison at Mescalera. That's around $500 a year. Even a marshal makes more money than that, Johnny. You're forgetting one thing, aren't you, Marshal? What's that? You haven't delivered this prison at the Mescalero yet. to get out. I'll need some help in getting it off the road. Well, get on with it. We've wasted enough time now. Johnny Q. It'll be dark directly. We can wait. Better than me. You haven't got a chance, Marshal. Only one man, two guns, and not too much ammunition. Come walking out first! 
Come on down and get me, Mike. You practically saved her life. Are, are you all right? Yes. I guess I fainted. Okay. Marshal Buckhart. Yes? I want to talk to you. I'm listening. All of you. We've got to use common sense. He's just one cheap little criminal. Not cheap, Commissioner. You're a Harvard-trained man, Buckhart. That makes you a man of reason and logic. And logic cries out, it's better to let this man go. Aren't our lives more important than this? Mr. Pauley, if I let him go, how many people do you think would die before we caught him again? I told you three of his men were killed in a hold-up he stayed. What I didn't tell you was that seven others died. Is that what you want? To buy your life with someone else's? That's not according to my logic. Do you expect me to stay here and be slain like a steer in a slaughterhouse? I'm going out to talk to these men. Polly! Listen to me! I'm, I'm Commissioner Polly! Polly. You can have your gun at you! Polly! Listen to me! <laughs> Marshal. Yes. Just. Just what are our chances, Marshal? Well. We've got two guns. I meant to give you this before. My aunt in the East gave it to me for protection against bashers and drunks. But I never needed it. I don't know if it's any good. Well, if we need it, it's better than nothing. They'll probably make their move when it gets dark. They can't let us stay here until daylight. It's another stage due south then. We can't expect any help before then. I could go. Try to get back to Santa Fe. No. You couldn't get out of this canyon without alarming them. You'd be on foot. They've got horses. Wait a minute. What? What is it? Maybe we can get help. How well can you handle a rifle? Well, it's been a long time, but not since I was a boy. Well, that's good enough. Now, I want you to keep your eyes on that canyon rim. If they start shooting, you fire back. It doesn't matter whether you hit anything. Just keep them busy. I'm going to try to cut the lead horse loose. When he comes into the relay station alone, they'll send out a party to see what's happened. Can you cover me? I'll try. Good. Run out on 
us! Don't leave us in this trap! Buckhart! <laughs> Rick, get that horse before we have a posse on our necks. Will the horse, will, will help come? I don't know, Mrs. Dodge. Maybe, maybe not. If the horse got away, they'll be coming down and soon. Three against one, that wouldn't be much of a chance. Two, Mr. Arnold, I'm counting on you. Me? There was a teacher at Harvard that taught me a great truth. He said that in the presence of danger, a man is forced to face himself as he really is. From that time on, he will know the true measure of his strength, whether he's a weakling or a man of courage. Let's hope we're on the side of courage. May I take his bag off? Johnny's been doing a lot of talking. He wanted me to help him escape. He thought that Mr. Arnold and I... right when he guessed I was interested in you. I guess I shouldn't have mentioned it. Why not? Sometimes a man and a woman live a long time before the right partner comes along. Where are you going? Do what would happen to Buckhart? Nothing. All I want to do is make tracks. Promise? Sure, I promise. How much is your promise worth? Listen, you just get his guns, and I'll just walk out of here. Huh? 
Then your men would still have their guns. Oh, no. You call your men down, tell them to drop their guns, then you walk out. On arm? I trust me more than I do you. All right. Give me the rifle, Marshal. Give it to me, Mr. Buckhart. He isn't worth any of us dying for. All right, move over there. Horace. Stay out of this, Abby. Hey, Mac! Mac! We got Buckhart's guns! Mac! Mac, do you hear me? Mac! Listen! Arnold's got Buckhart covered! Arnold? He's uh, one of the passengers. A dress salesman. A dress salesman? <laughs> Come on down, Mac! Put down your guns and come on down! Arnold's gonna let me walk out of here! All right, Johnny! We're coming down! Look hard. You got the keys to these things, huh? Shut up! Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Because I told them to, Miss Holmes. It was the only way we could get them in the open. And Johnny didn't know I had this. It's much better than nothing. Thank you, Marshal Bye. Marshal, I... Yes? A man never really knows himself, does he? You can live a long time before you know what you are. Now I know. I'm... Let's say you're a man inexperienced in the ways of outlaws and let it go at that. Drunks and mashers. Oh, I don't think you'll be needing it anymore. No, maybe I won't. You keep it, Marshal. Well, good luck, Mr. Arnold. Thanks. All right, Johnny, Mescalero. <laughs> 